Hi, it's Michael Zapersky from ConsultingSuccess.com and welcome to the Consulting Corner, where consultants learn to consistently attract their ideal clients and earn higher fees. And today I want to talk to you about the two types of consulting retainers. But before we actually get into the retainers and what they mean and how to use them, let's actually explore what consulting retainers are. So a lot of people have this idea that when you get into consulting, that the business is unstable, right? That when you work a nine to five job uh, and you're in the kind of the general employment, that that is stability. But as we've all seen, that is not stability, right? You can lose your job at any time. Uh, really the control of, of your destiny in terms of your job uh, is left up to others and not is, is not in your own hands. But when you start and run your own business, you really have control. Uh, and consulting retainers are one of the most effective ways to create stability in terms of your income because you get paid month in, month, in, month out on an ongoing recurring basis uh, and that can often be for, for months if not years when you're creating great value for your clients and really building those trusting and powerful relationships. So consulting retainers can really help you to achieve consistent income uh, and that is great because as you're landing additional projects, you know that you're always having that base of recurring revenue uh, through the consulting retainer model. Now, in terms of the two types of consulting retainers, there, the first one is called pay for work. And this is what a lot of people think about when they think about retainers and when they kind of consider about the, the concept of receiving uh, ongoing payment on a monthly basis from their clients. But the pay for work model is really where you provide ongoing work for your clients um, and you get paid for it. So whether you're receiving $1,000 a month or $3,000 a month or $10,000 a month, the work that you're doing on that monthly basis uh, is what you're getting paid for. And that's why that model and that approach is called paid for work. Really, it's almost exactly the same as a contract or a project. The only difference is that you're, you're providing and delivering that work on an ongoing basis. And if you're using this model, you wanna set it up at the start with your client and show them what it looks like. So from start to finish, month in, month out, what are you gonna be working on? What will you be covering? How will you be helping them? What value will you be creating as you work with them on that ongoing basis. The second approach to consulting retainers is called pay for access. And pay for access is the model that I prefer. It's the model that the most advanced uh, and seasoned consultants use because it doesn't rely on you actually providing uh, work. With the pay for work model, really you're still trading hours for dollars. Right? When, you put, uh, when you spend half a day or you spend a few hours uh, on that monthly basis for that client, you're getting paid for that. So the time that you put in is directly connected to the money that you're making. But the pay for access model uh, works in that you are getting paid on a monthly basis or maybe the client is paying up front or for a chunk, a period of time, but they're really paying you not for specific deliverables and work that you're gonna be providing them with, but rather, they're paying to be able to access you. And this is why the pay for access model really only works, but works best when you already have an existing relationship with that client, meaning that you've already worked on at least one project with them so that they really feel that the trust is there. You both know that you enjoy working together uh, and that's the basis for the pay for access. Very uncommon uh, and really I wouldn't recommend to get right into a pay for access type of model or situation with someone that you've never worked with before. It's really hard to sell that to a client, but it's a beautiful and natural transition uh, after you've done some initial work for that client, they've seen the results that you can generate for them and the value that you can bring and they wanna be able to access you. So why would they do that, right? Why would they pay you on an ongoing basis where you're not necessarily providing them with specific work and deliverables? Well, they're doing that because they know that accessing you, accessing your knowledge, your expertise, maybe even your network is of value to them and it provides them with peace of mind. And they do it because they know that, and this is the way that you position it, is that if they don't lock you down, right? If they don't have that retainer set up with you, then your schedule could get very busy working with other clients. And when an issue comes up where they need or really want your assistance and help, 
they don't want to have to get in line, right? They want to be able to access you right away. And so by having you on retainer, they have that peace of mind that any time that something comes up, they can give you a quick call, send you an email, and you will respond to them uh, you know, as quickly as possible within a couple of hours or whatever you set out as, as being a reasonable amount of time. But they know that you are their advisor, that you're on their side, that you're there to consistently and constantly be there to support the growth of their business or to help them with any of the challenges that might come up. And so the pay for access model is beautiful because you're not trading time for dollars anymore. Uh, you might have a one month or two months or sometimes even several months will go by where the client doesn't call you up or doesn't uh, need your help. But then in month four or month five or whenever it happens, they give you a call and they know that you will be there to support them, that you will help them to find a solution to the problem or challenge that they're having. And that is worthwhile to them. And so in terms of pricing your retainers, or especially if we're talking about the pay for access, that is based on the value that you're providing, right? If you're charging $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year, as an example, then it needs to be clear to the buyer, to your client, that they access you and when they access you, that you're going to provide answers or solutions or recommendations to them that will be worth far more than $60,000 to them. So you always want to make sure that the value level in terms of what you're providing and the value that your uh, client will, will receive uh, and that the ROI uh, is going to be there for them. But those are the two different types of uh, retainer models, the pay for work and the pay for access.